Well, hey, everybody. For those of you keeping up with the astronomical season calendar, today's the last full day of astronomical summer. We're going to talk about an unusual murder case. Governors who were pleading with the president and a COVID vaccine for kids younger than 12. My name is Ike Morgan, and we are down in Alabama. We're getting closer to a postponed homicide trial that's expected to test Alabama law, reports AL.com's Amy Yerkinen. Back in May 2018, Jordan Rice called 911. Her third child, one-year-old Violet, had died. Responding officers described a bad scene with a badly underweight little girl inside a dirty, unkempt RV that was the family's home. Authorities said the woman did not give food, medical treatment, or supervision to her kids, causing Violet's death. Our responding officer even said she didn't seem clear on the timing of Violet's death. Baldwin County, Alabama Sheriff Hall Smack called it one of the most horrific child deaths he's ever seen. Jordan Rice was arrested charged with capital murder, and placed behind bars. Now, about eight months passed by, and she started saying that she was having bad headaches. She lost vision in both eyes. She had an MRI, and doctors found a mass the size of a fist in the lining around her brain. Her attorney has filed a motion to dismiss the case over the effect he claims the tumor had on her behavior. Dr. Ryan Darby is a neurologist at Vanderbilt University Medical Center, and he studied brain tumors and their effects on criminal and antisocial behavior. He said a meningioma like Rice's, quote, can result in something that we call apathy. So that's really being less interested, less motivated, really having fewer voluntary actions. So patients could be more neglectful of hygiene, less interested in things, less motivated to do things than they would have otherwise. In extreme cases, some patients just stop responding or moving even though they're physically capable of it. Legal experts told Amy that it's a rare defense, but that it's come up before. Some say they don't expect it to be an easy sell. Simply having the tumor isn't the same as being able to show that her behavior deteriorated over time or that she was not able to think rationally. It'll likely be a test of Alabama law. Rice's attorney said he's not familiar with other similar cases here. Now, there's a lot more on that story if you search for brain tumor defense on AL.com. 26 Republican governors, Alabama's Kay Ivey among them, have asked to meet with President Joe Biden sometime over the next couple weeks regarding the enforcement, or lack thereof, at the Mexican border, reports AL.com's Mike Kaysen. Now, a letter sent to the president argues that the federal government has a responsibility to enforce the laws regarding illegal movement across the borders, that the president is not seeing that duty through, and that the states have been left to deal with the problems that are caused. Governor Ivey issued a statement, quote, My fellow governors and I have sent state resources, yet we have seen no action from the Biden-Harris administration. National security is critical, And make no mistake, eight months of unenforced borders places us all at risk. Pfizer-BioNTech issued a press release this week saying that data is showing that a lower-dose COVID-19 vaccine is safe for children ages 5 to 11. And experts at the University of Alabama at Birmingham believe such a vaccine may arrive in October, reports AL.com's Amy Yerkinen. The shot would have one-third the dose that's given to adults. Now, kids 12 and over have been cleared to get the Pfizer vaccine for weeks now, and UAB's Dr. David Kimberlin said it's shown to be quite safe for those children. He said there have been rare cases of heart inflammation that are usually gone after a couple of days. He said, statistically, you're three times more likely to be struck by lightning than get a case of myocarditis. And he also pointed out that you have a higher chance of getting that heart inflammation from being infected by COVID than you do by getting the vaccine. Let's see, it's September 21st, born on this day in 1944, author Fanny Flagg, who was originally from Birmingham, Alabama. As some of y'all veteran TV watchers might know her from the celebrity panel on Match Game, 
Of course, she wrote the novel Fried Green Tomatoes at the Whistle Stop Cafe, inspired by the real-life Irondale Cafe. Thank you all so much for listening. We'll be back tomorrow. Until then, come on by and see us on the internet at al.com. Thank you.